Hi everybody, it's your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are continuing our eighth unit in AP Biology on ecology by basically doing part two of 8.3 here. Um, so 8.4, the topic for today is the effect of density on populations, okay? So in our last video, we discussed exponential growth. When a population reproduces without limits, it results in exponential growth. There's no limiting factors um, when we're talking about exponential growth. And what are limiting factors? Well, those are things that limit population growth, factors that limit population growth. You can have density-independent limiting factors that will limit population growth based not based on the population's density or how many individuals are packed in a certain area. And then there are, of course, density-dependent limiting factors, um, factors that will stop a population from growing or reduce a population's growth based on the density of the population, how many individuals are in a given certain uh, given area. Okay, So high density populations are going to be more likely hindered by competition for resources, territorialism, predation, disease, all sorts of stuff that's going to reduce population growth. And exponential growth is, is when uh, we have no such limiting factors. And is this actually a real thing that's going to happen out in nature? where we have unlimited resources, unlimited space, no predators, no disease? Probably not. It's not going to be a thing. Exponential growth, while it does happen, it's not sustainable. Okay? It's not sustainable in that it cannot be continued because there is always some kind of limiting factor. There's always some kind of limit. No population can grow exponentially forever. Every single area or an environment has what we call a carrying capacity whether that be a pond full of, uh, for tadpoles or that's a, a dew drop for microorganisms, protists. Um, it could be the planet and human beings. It's the maximum population size that a particular environment can sustain. That is called the carrying capacity, and it is denoted mathematically with the letter K. K is representing the maximum population size that a particular environment can sustain a carrying capacity. Um, and when an environment does have a carrying capacity, a population does not grow exponentially. It grows in a logistic pattern. It results in logistic population growth. Um, and that per capita rate of population growth approaches zero as the size nears the carrying capacity. And instead of a J-shaped curve like we saw before with exponential growth, we have more of an S-shaped curve. And it's often described that logistic population growth um, starts off as being exponential and then as the population size approaches the carrying capacity the growth slows down as well so as we can see it starts to grow really fast it starts maybe exponentially and then as it approaches this line up here the the line of 100 individuals it starts to slow and level off as it approaches that line okay and this actually can be represented mathematically as well so just like, um, just like our equations that we looked at in 8.3, dn over dt is representing population growth. Okay? What this is, population growth under a logistic growth model, is the per capita rate of increase, so the per capita growth rate, times the number of individuals in the population, all multiplied by this, this uh, factor right here, the carrying capacity minus the population size divided by carrying capacity. Okay, so the difference in carrying the difference between the population size and the carrying capacity divided by carrying capacity multiplied by per capita growth rate and population size. Okay, we're going to run through an example here in just a second, and just like all the other equations um, that we've used so far in AP Biology, on the AP Biology test, College Board will give you a sheet full of equations and formulas that you can reference. Um, and use during the test. Okay, so you will get this and you don't have to necessarily memorize it. Okay, so as I said, K is representing the carrying capacity. And a couple things about logistic growth is that per capita growth rate, which is R, it decreases as population size N gets closer to carrying capacity. So just what I was saying before, as that growth gets, as the population gets closer to carrying capacity, growth rate slows down. Um, real populations, not like fake ones that have unlimited growth or like unlimited resources, space, all that kind of stuff, follow a logistic growth curve and it's due to limited resources and space. Um, a real population oftentimes will kind of fluctuate around the carrying capacity. 
okay? So if this is a new population in an area, it will start to grow exponentially, reach carrying capacity, and then sometimes what can happen is that it'll, it'll cause overshoot. And it says right here, overshoot occurs when the population growth exceeds the carrying capacity, leading to a die-off, okay? So we exceed carrying capacity, the environment can't sustain this many organisms, this many uh, individuals in the population, so there's a die-off. And then now that we're back under carrying capacity, we're going back up and going back down and going back up, and that will, in, that will, uh, that will eventually level out to the carrying capacity, provided that the carrying capacity does not become degraded. So as environments get destroyed by people, as we're going to talk about in topic 8.7, um, degrading carrying capacity can can result in a lower population overall. Okay? Even when the population is growing at a steady rate, the degrading carrying capacity and degrading environment can bring down the overall population as well. Okay, So this is kind of what's happening today thanks to human beings um, as far as ecology. Okay, But what we're seeing, as I said, is a logistic growth curve. It slows down as it reaches carrying capacity. So here's an example. Um, a population of 25 deer with a per capita growth rate of 1.0 live in a population, or excuse me, live in an environment with a 1,500 deer carrying capacity. Okay, I just made this up off the top of my head, kind of. So it's not necessarily a real example, but it illustrates logistic growth pretty well. <coughs> excuse me. So uh, calculate growth rate. Here's our equation um, for logistic growth. And if you want to try this yourself before I go through all the answers, go ahead and pause the video and try that out. If not, I'm going to carry on here and I'm going to show everybody what I'm talking about. Okay, so if we sub in all of our variables into this equation, we plug and chug, that's what it's called. Um, here's our growth rate. Okay, R is 1. Okay, our per capita growth rate is 1. Our population size is 25. Okay, and then we multiply that by our carrying capacity minus the population size divided by the carrying capacity. Okay, so it's going to be 25, because that's 25 times 1, times 1,500 divided by 20, or minus 25 divided by 1,500. Okay, so if you plug all this into your calculator, this is what you'll eventually get, that the logistic growth rate is going to be 25. Okay, so it's we're, the population, we expect on a regular basis, the population to grow by 25 deer which is a lot. This population is going to double, okay? Um, at this point in this, uh, this population's development, it's, going, it's expected to double based on our mathematics that we have over here, okay? So that's, that's a pretty big growth rate that's going to grow by 29, or 25. All right, so now take a look at this scenario. A population of 1,499 deer with a per capita growth rate of 1, live in an environment with a 1,500 deer carrying capacity, same environment, calculate the growth rate. Now what is it going to be? If this is following a logistic growth curve, we're pretty close to the carrying capacity. What's the growth rate going to look like? Well, if we put in the same thing as before, 1 times 1,499 times the, um, this property, or excuse me, this uh, thing in the parentheses, 1,500 minus 1,499 divided by 1,500. We put that all into our calculator, follow order of operations, and what we're going to eventually get is that it's 1. Okay, That's our expected growth of this population is by 1 deer, which makes sense, right? It's only 1 below what the carrying capacity is. It's probably not going to go any higher than 1,500 as a, as a result of the carrying capacity. Now, real populations do. They overshoot and then come back down, overshoot, come back down, but it will eventually level off at what the carrying capacity is, provided that that compare carrying capacity is not degraded by environmental destruction. Okay? So this is logistic growth. Okay? And this is what a real population will look like um, on account of density-dependent limiting factors. All right? That is it for this video. We're going to get into community ecology in our next video for 8.5. Let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you next time.